Hello. Hey, it's nice to see a full room. So, you know, we're not going to present any technical stuff here. So, probably you've seen some of the presentations in the academic track. Uh, it was like deep technical stuff, so we're doing to make it a bit lighter and uh, have some kind of like educational track. So, let's first introduce ourselves. So, this is Marian. Uh, he's actually the attendee, uh, one of the attendees of the camp. He's, he's 14 by a few days. He actually had a birthday just before DEFCON, so happy birthday. Uh, I think he's the youngest presenter at this conference, so yeah. And I'm Jerry. Uh, I'm not the important one. So the, what do we do? Each summer, like since 1998, when was the first year it was like different organizers, it was not me. Uh, but since that year, every year, we take a group of teenagers and we like shh, let them go in the mountains with us for a week. Yeah, it's like Saturday to Saturday. I think originally it was a bit longer. And we show them interesting mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, yeah, it has a long tradition. It's like 21 years now, which is quite nice. Uh, so during the time, of course, it, the, uh, how the camp looks like shifted a bit, but nowadays uh, it's for 25 attendees, uh, mostly for 12 to 9 years old, so it's mostly high schoolers, I'd say. When, when they quit high school or you just go to university, then this is, the, this is the stop, then they cannot come anymore. Most people are actually returning each year. Uh, <coughs> historically, in the, end of, in the mountains, the reasons are quite simple. We need nice hills so we can like get them out and run uphill for some time to get them a bit tired. So we're not uh, they go like they sleep at night and don't stay awake uh, till midnight playing games or whatever. Uh, being in mountains has some challenges though. So for example. Getting internet there is sometimes a bit problem, so we resort to solutions like this antenna just in the middle of the woods uh, yeah, to get a good connection. For the attendees, it is required to have at least some programming experience, such as if conditions, loops, functions, and arrays. Every, pro every attendee has used a different programming language, such as C, C, Python, Java, IOC Sharp and attendees have different operating systems, mostly Mac and Windows, and some even use Mac. And Linux and Windows, you mean, mostly. Yeah, yeah mostly Linux and Windows. Um, and there is unintended high Linux conversion, by the way. So it's not that we like force them to switch to Linux. We don't. Yeah, Windows is just fine. But you know, all the organizers are using Linux, and. We all know Linux is great, yeah, so usually by the end of the camp, like after several iterations, several years, we just magically end up using Linux. <laughs> okay, three words about what we do during the camp. So we have two kind of lines. The first one is, of course, the technical line. So we show them interesting stuff. Uh, we have talks and workshops uh, and so on. And the second line is, I'd like to call it social line. Yeah, so we, it's like for improving the soft skills. So we are take that group and let them go outside and do something without computers sometimes. Uh, and also we have a contest that's running through all the camp and at the end of the camp they can win interesting prizes. Mm -hmm. Thank you Red Hat, uh, thank you CZ Nick. Uh, yeah. And the talks. We cover a lot of, we cover a wide range of topics such as programming languages such as C, Python, C++, or F Sharp and Lua. Uh, we talk about frameworks such as Django, and there are some talks about some tools such as Git, GDB, Vim, or Make. And sometimes we have some hardware talks about Arduino, USB, and sometimes we even have some IoT things. 
Oh, yeah. So you see, he intentionally he omitted the, the first item, it's algorithms that are structures. So of course we do that too. It's not that popular, but <laughs> yeah, we we teach them how to like walk through graphs and so on, don't worry. Uh, and we also we also invite guests because I mean we're mighty organizers, we know everything of course, but not so much. So sometimes there are some areas that other people are better at presenting. So we invite them and they come and talk to, to, to the students about various stuff. To be honest, the games are actually pretty crazy. They are made by developers for developers. Uh, we, we, we play the games outside, mostly. And one day, there is a full day trip. So maybe some examples. What game did you like more the most in the last camp? Well, I liked uh, mining cryptocurrencies when we were <laughs> when we were running from our computer to to a tree to the hill because in the hill, and we were collecting like small papers and typing the codes that were on the papers to our computers. Those were votes, so they like, exchange votes for the currencies. Yeah, of course. And then we were like making the cryptocurrencies and trading them. What did you not like? <laughs> well, there actually wasn't anything that I didn't like. You see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We do also. So one thing that's like regular thing each year, or mostly each year is we do like some kind of puzzle hunt. So the, they get a, a cipher or puzzle, let's say, and they have to solve it. And when they solve it, uh, they get location of the next puzzle. So they go there and then they fetch paper with the next puzzle and so on. So the interesting stuff is it's, and it, it starts like just after dinner and it has like no set time when it ends. Usually the teenagers sleep a lot at the presentations next day, but <laughs> yeah, no, we had hard to stop at 2 a.m. But <laughs> so, okay, no, no event such as this one could run without the computers and technologies behind them and so on. So as I said, all the people behind the camp, like the organizers, are using Linux, and we're open source fans, of course, so we also use open source technologies. So we have a server. You, you can see the server in the picture. There's that laptop that's just in the corner. Uh, there's a server serving the whole, the whole camp. So there's web server running there. So I mean, in traditional summer camps, there are things like daily program, like what's going on in the schedule, what will be going on next day, and what, uh, what, what meals uh, will be, and so on, menu. So usually it's a like paper just being somewhere, and we don't have to do that. We're like eco-friendly, so we have the computers, and it's online. Uh, <coughs> we have internal, internal web app with all of that that's built on top of Django, Python, we like Python. And I do not. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yeah, also, we're now pretty rich, you know, so we could afford our own top level domain. If we want it, well, bad luck because it's accessible only from the camp. Thank you, Bind. And the important thing, we Usually for the contest, we build our custom solutions, and, and those the, are open source. The, the camp contest is different every year. Uh, as he said, they make, they make custom solutions that are available on the GitHub, and they should be like programming language independent, so it doesn't matter which programming language the attendee uses. But that actually wasn't true the last year. Sorry. Do you like Python? I do not. <laughs> yeah, so this is the GitHub page. You can check it out. 
I present two of those. Uh, the first one that we're going to present will have live demo. Uh, it's called Mazet, and it, it's a framework when we can develop different tasks for, for, for the attendee or for the contestants. Uh, basically, it doesn't have to be a maze, but it has to be something that's like in a grid and has some visual representation and it uses like some comments to do something, usually move around, but not necessarily. And the task is to write a client that solves that maze, whatever. Uh, so the client connects to server to the server, and it sends comments to the server. We did not want the attendees to deal with the networking communication, so we built libraries for several different uh, languages. All is on GitHub, so they can just like call a function and pass it a uh, character that is sent to to the server. And then there, there is a WebSocket interface, so we had a web page where I can see in life what's going on. So maybe let's see, let's see something. Oh, okay, I need to move it to this screen. Sorry for that. Uh, so this is the front end, doing nothing at this point, waiting for a connection. So uh, here you can see just a simple maze. Yeah, where you can, uh, which you can solve like doing manually and you are the player and your task is to get the treasure. Now you can see you have time, you have time limit and, and the maze is much more bigger so you have to make the program, you can do it manually. Yeah, that search will come. Uh, <laughs> So, and the maze is auto-generated each time, so, yeah. Yeah, this is just a classic minesweeper as we all know it. And the, and there was a time limit in like next levels, so. Yeah, you had to write program to solve minesweeper. This is just a classic old snake. So that looks easy, yeah? No, time limit probably does not apply here, but what happens if the snake is put into a maze? <laughs> and one thing it can do, it allows multiple connections to the same maze, to the same level. So, it's not. so there was even a table where like four different, the, the maze was split in four parts, there were four snakes and they had to cooperate. To, I think there were like only two or three uh, students who were able to, to program that and to, to, to finish that one. Hard. And this is a Tetris where your your goal is to is to like clear out. Yeah, clear it out. It's classic Tetris except it's on a <laughs> 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 it's a small touch. Yeah, and it's quite long. So yeah, you need to write something like that. So it's a Tetris solver. I think no one actually was able to solve that. This is this is a mine. This is my solver. We will not let it run to the end. It it will finish in like in five minutes. But <laughs> yep. So let's stop it. Uh, the other thing we are going to show and demo probably is uh, septic. Uh, it's a framework that <coughs> allows you have to specify functions and variables that are exported to a program. So the task of the attendees <coughs> is to write a program using some functions that are like, given available to them. And yeah, basically that's it. So they write a Python program that is uploaded to the server. It runs uh, at the server in a container. It's isolated from, uh, from the system. And it can call the predefined functions. So you, there was tasks like, uh, there was a graph given and finding a shortest path in the graph between two nodes or even like easier things like uh, playing guessing, guess number game with the computer and, and so on. Uh, Python has introspection, yes, yeah? so we need to isolate uh, that from that. So Everything is doing RPC, like transparently, so the function, in fact, is RPC outside of the container. 
Uh, for the front end, we used, uh, we used the ACE web editor, code editor. So here is an example. This is actually the, the web for the camp. That's not open source yet. Uh, and this is a Facebook game. So we can do program stuff like, hello, run it, and yeah, it outputs hello and the uh, program, program ended. Sorry, it's check only. And of course, you can you know, just solid call face and bus functions as appropriate, de depending on whether it's divisible by three and five and so on. And after the end, it tells you the password. So that's an example here. Okay. <coughs> we have a lot of demand. So we have absolutely no problem filling up the camp. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, students, a lot of engineers are interested in joining the camp. That's why we need to put in some limitations. So for example, we like take only students who have some, at least some basic experience, not the complete beginners, no capacity for that. Uh, now we run two camps back to back. So we can have like 50 attendees. We could usually do four, maybe even more, but we don't have enough people doing that, organizing that stuff. So it's, it's, it's quite hard. To my knowledge, for it's during, during summer, there's probably nothing, no, no other camp than, than we are doing in the whole Czech Republic. Uh, I know about, there's something, maybe one, similar, but with like low, even lower capacity. Uh, there, we try to cooperate as much as possible with, uh, with other similar events and so on. So, for example, the Charles University in Prague, they're doing correspondence uh, programming uh, contest called KSP. So we try to work with them at least a bit. And yeah, by, by the way, they do like a week long uh, camp during the school year. Uh, so it's, it's, it's in many ways similar to what we do and it's pretty cool. So what, we, what I would like to see is more opportunities for, for, for teenagers to, to be able to, to attend. And so because mostly they are on their own. Yeah, they have to learn all the stuff themselves and that's not how it should be. So if any one of you, <laughs> not talking mostly to the Czech guys, it's like willing to help or have some ideas or even help their own camp. Yeah, yeah please, please do. <laughs> I'm willing to help like, exchange ideas, exchange like software or exchange uh, experience, whatever, yeah. Please, let's make more opportunities for them. They're really good. <laughs> there are a lot of really great kids uh, here in the in Czech Republic. Oh. Yeah, and this is just our web page, which you can visit. Check only, sorry. <laughs> Use Google Translator. Uh, questions? Yeah. So, how, do you have problems with some of the kids getting a little frustrated when they get to the higher end? How do you deal with that? Yep, that's a good question. Uh, so, I repeat that. Uh, some of the camps that we showed seem to be pretty difficult. So, the question was whether the kids are not too frustrated with those. So, first, I showed, we showed you only the interesting ones. There was a lot more that were like much easier. So, we tried to, of course, we tried to balance that because the, the level of the attendees is yeah, it's, it's not the same, it, it, it varies a lot. So some of, some of those just like started programming last year and some of those are uh, attending international programming contests already. So we need to have something for everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and so, yeah, so we try to put it in the way that everyone can find <coughs> its own level, his or her own level. And of course, we help them. It's not like, here is a task, just solve it or die. No. <laughs> <laughs> they, 
although the schedule is packed, they do have like free free time during the day when they can work on, on, on the contest and other stuff. <coughs> and we intentionally plan it so all the organizers or most organizers are free at the moment, not doing anything else, and just trying to help them. Uh, to explain stuff like So I didn't hear well. So how the question was how it was founded. Right? So <coughs> it originated as a <coughs> as an event that was I'm sorry. <coughs> it originated as an event that was <coughs> made for the best attendees of a programming contest. <coughs> there is a contest held here in the Czech Republic every year, organized by the Ministry of uh, School and Educations. <coughs> Education. And uh, in 1998, it, it started as an event, like week, I think maybe, maybe it was even, maybe even two weeks, uh, event for like the best attendees of that time. But over time, it got more open and then like evolved in the current shape. So it was uh, Jirka Kosek who, who started that. He's maybe, you may know the name, he's like the X XML expert like, known for his work on uh, the uh, lib open office uh, documentation format and so on. So, yeah. <coughs> ah, found it, not found it. Okay, sorry. So, how, how, how it is paid? Yeah, great question. Uh, we try to the photo camp to be as accessible as possible. Yeah, so part of the reason why it's in mountains, yeah, of course, we like the nature, and this, this is the number one reason. But we don't have to have to do that in the city also because of costs. So the accommodation yeah, in, the, in the mountain, it's, it's really cheaper, especially during summer. <coughs> during winter, it's not the case, of course. Uh, and we are volunteers. We do that for free, and nobody is paid for doing any of this. Uh, we do it in our spare time, usually taking a vacation, or, uh, or for those uh, among the who study in university, they are taking part of their holidays. And so we try to lower the cost as much as possible. I think that, so the culture here in the Republic is, it's quite usual for kids during the winter to go to a summer camp for a week or two. So the parents usually count with that. And if the price stays like a competitive level, so it's below the usual camps that like organize commercially, then I think we're fine. And so far we're, we're managing to do that. So yes, we try to, to be cheap, but it's not free. Thank you for the question. So the question was, what's the gender, uh, yeah, balance. gender balance between uh, between the attendees? Yeah, that's one of the pain points we have. So we usually have like only two, maybe even one girl among the attendees, which I don't like. It's better. Several years ago, there was only male only, so it is starting to change. The next year, or for this year. We have, first time ever we will have uh, one of uh, the girls as, as an organizer. So I, I really love that and I hope this will mark like the, the change in the, in the industry. So yeah, we're trying to do something with that, but it, it's hard. We're out of time, thank you.